All right, welcome everyone to Oceanside Library's program. Um, I'd now love to introduce our presenter for this program for meal prep strategies, Jennifer Leaves from Chef Girl Nutrition. Okay, all right. Hello everyone, thank you for joining this workshop this evening on this Monday. Um, so our uh, workshop today is called Meal Planning and Flexible Meal Prep Strategies. Um, and so the title pretty much speaks for itself. We're going to be talking all things meal prep, uh, meal planning and meal prep. Um, so whether you are somebody who already kind of does a little bit of meal, pl uh, meal planning or it's totally new to you, um, maybe it's something that in the start of this year, it's something that you want to kind of start working on a little bit. Maybe you have a goal to start meal planning a bit or to meal prep a little bit more. I know for many of us, um, there's been a lot more cooking at home um, over the past year. So this could be a really great goal to help, um, you know, ease some of that stress that might be coming along with all of this, um, you know, added cooking that you've been doing at home. So we are going to dive in. I'm going to share my screen here to pull up our presentation. And let's, whoops, start the slideshow. Okay, here we go. All right, so meal planning and flexible meal prep strategies. Um, and as Okaria mentioned, um, I have a couple of places through the presentation that I will ask if you have any questions, um, just to, you know, kind of keep us on track. But if you do have questions that come up as I'm going, just write them in the chat and there will be time at the end um, that I will address any questions that you have written there. Okay, let me just make sure I can see the chat here. All right. So before we dive in, I just wanna get a little bit of a pulse on you guys here who are with me. Um, do you do any meal planning now? Do you do any meal prep? Is it something that you're just kind of getting started with, something you're hoping to just learn more about? Um, I would love for you to just write that in the chat, kind of where you are at um, with meal planning and prep, if that's something that's already part of your lifestyle, um, if it's already kind of a, a weekly habit for you. Just write in the chat um, kind of where you're, where you're at with your meal planning uh, habits here. And I will get started in with our presentation. Okay. All right. Need to just move this. Sorry, just give me one sec. I'm just moving this over so I can see the chat and the and the PowerPoint here. Okay. All right, so our learning objectives for this presentation are to understand what meal planning and meal prep are and the benefits of each of them, um, to learn simple strategies to start implementing meal planning and prep into your life without spending hours in the kitchen, because that is one of the um, biggest kind of pain points that I hear about meal planning and prep is that, you know, you have this, this kind of image of it that it's going to make you lose an entire Sunday or it's going to, you know, have you spending hours in the kitchen. So we're going to address that a little bit. And then um, we'll end with a quick demonstration just to show you how to apply this more flexible approach that we're going to talk all about to create nutritionally balanced meals that are also delicious. Um, so before diving in there, I will just tell you a little bit about me just so you know who you are listening to and why you can uh, trust me here. Whoops. So my name is Jen. I am a registered dietitian and a certified dietitian nutritionist. Um, and I'm also a trained chef in health supportive cooking. Um, so I have some experience in clinical nutrition in a hospital setting, as well as some community nutrition experience and um, in the corporate wellness space. Um, I went into business for myself last year. And so that is my business, Chef Girl Nutrition. Um, and in my business, I offer personalized one-on-one -on -one nutrition counseling along with individual and group cooking classes, culinary nutrition workshops like we're doing here this evening, 
um, as well as recipe development. Um, and just to give you a little bit of a background there, my experience in the clinical uh, setting really kind of opened my eyes to this gap in the nutrition space. Um, you know, as a dietitian, um, there is this gap between providing nutrition education and that, you know, that person then being able to go home and put that nutrition education into action. And what I mean when I say that is essentially cooking, right? So we can't, you know, nutrition is, comes from food and we can't really have food without being able to cook it, right? There are of course things that we can do that don't involve cooking, like eating out, meal delivery services, those kinds of things. But the, the thing that is going to always be most sustainable is being able to rely on yourself and your own skill set. Um, and so that's why I went to culinary school to better, you know, strengthen my skill set to be able to incorporate cooking education along with the nutrition education to really be able to um, you know, help clients and help the public um, have that confidence in the kitchen to be able to cook in the ways that really support their health um, and use food to support your health. So that brings us just to the mission of my business is really to simplify nutrition science and healthy cooking to help you feel confident in your food choices without relying on fad diets, right? Without relying on external kinds of motivators um, and external kinds of cues to tell you what to eat, when to eat, what you shouldn't eat, you know, what time you can eat, all these kinds of rules that exist around food. Those rules don't have to exist. Um, you can really um, become empowered to, you know, rely on yourself, like I said, um, to, um, you know, to provide yourself with the best nutrition for your health goals. Um, and I am passionate about erasing the stigma that healthy food is bland and boring and that you need to spend hours in the kitchen to create nutritious and delicious meals. So that is a big part of the work I do. And that is going to tie into what we're talking about today. Okay, so before we keep going, I'm gonna look at the chat here and see, see you guys wrote some things about your meal planning. So let's see. So prepping, planning and cooking for years, looking for new tips. I plan and cook three meals a day, just starting. Daily prep need more help. Okay, so we're kind of a lit, we're we're a little uh, summer summer experienced and looking for some new ideas, and some are just getting started. And so wherever you are at in your meal planning and prep journey, um, I'm confident that you will get a lot of good tips out of today's presentation. I will just mention also that. Each of these topics, meal planning and meal prep, um, you know, could be lessons upon lessons on themselves, and there's a lot to dive into. And so we're going to touch on the most, you know, kind of the big topics and some of my best tips for you. Um, but we really are kind of skimming the surface here. Um, so it might feel like a lot of information, um, but I just want to give you, you know, as much information that is useful to you to really implement in your life and tips that are going to make it easier. Um, but with something like meal planning and prep, the best advice that I can give you is to start. And the, you're going to learn the most and you're going to get better and more efficient at it the more that you do it. Okay, so what you might think meal planning and prep looks like. So we might have this image in our heads of you know these very basic kind of meals, like just this plain steamed chicken and, uh, and broccoli, um, you know, identical meals day after day. And so, if, you know, that might be the impression that you have of what meal planning and prep looks like. Um, it has kind of changed, you know, in recent years because it's become a much more kind of uh, like wellness trend <laughs> to be meal planning and prepping. Um, so you see more than just these kind of um, standard looking dishes now, but this for a while was kind of the impression that people have of meal planning and prep. Um, and I don't know about you, but I don't want to eat the same exact thing every single day. And I also don't want to eat something that looks very bland and boring. Like I said, that is part of my mission is to erase that um, kind of idea that this is what healthy eating has to look like. So what is meal planning then? 
So meal planning is really quite simply planning out your meals ahead of time. So you're not making those decisions in the moment when you're already hungry and short on time. So it, it does not have to be this super elaborate plan with you know detailed recipes and tons of ingredients. The truth is it just needs to be enough to relieve some decision-making during the week. So you can do as much or as little planning as you want. And we'll talk about this a bit more, but you don't have to go into meal planning thinking that you need to plan every single meal, every single snack for every single day, um, you know, down to the very last ingredient. Um, it does not have to be super elaborate. It just needs to be enough that it helps you, that it's relieving some decision-making during the week. So I'll give you a little dinner time comparison here. Um, and I would love for you to uh, tell me in the comments, uh, in the chat box here, if you can relate. I know that I certainly can. Um, I do not, you know, I don't, it kind of varies week to week. You know, it's gonna vary based on the time that you have available, how much planning or prep that you do week to week. So there are certainly weeks that I am not planned well enough, right? And you have these moments where you're staring at the fridge, you're hoping something jumps out at you. Right? You're just staring at the fridge, looking at all the things that are there. You just don't know what to do with it. Um, you're feeling indecisive and frustrated. And the more frustrated that you get, the more indecisive you are. Right, It gets harder to make a decision the more frustrated you are. So you start grazing on anything you can find because now you're also getting hungry. You're getting hungrier and hungrier trying to figure out what to eat. So you start grazing on you know, any easy snacks that you can grab, you end up overeating and you spoil your appetite. So your meal ends up really not being well balanced or really not much of a meal at all. It might have just been a bunch of little snacks. So you're not satisfied, right? You might have physically filled up your stomach like you're full from all this grazing that you just did, but you're not actually satisfied. And there's a big difference there. And that can lead to more nighttime snacking, right? Nighttime snacking is a huge um, you know, it's a huge pain point for people. It's something that I hear very often is how do I, you know, stop my nighttime cravings? How do I stop my nighttime snacking? I always eat so much after dinner. Um, and this can be a huge factor in that. If your meals are not satisfying, you're going to be snacky in between your meals, or if it's dinner, you're going to be snacky at night. Um, and then all of that snacking can lead you to feel guilt, regret, or shame for snacking so much, right? For eating, uh, for eating foods that maybe, you know, don't feel so good for you. You just feel badly that you ended up overeating because you never put together a balanced and satisfying meal. With meal planning, we can combat that because now we can open the fridge and we know exactly what the options are, right? We assemble a balanced meal while we're comfortably hungry. We're not ravenous. We enjoy the meal. We feel content. We feel satisfied. And then maybe we enjoy a mindful nighttime snack, right? There's nothing wrong with having a nighttime snack, but it's when you're kind of mindlessly snacking that becomes an issue. So now you've had a satisfying meal and you decide that you want a night, nighttime snack and you enjoy it mindfully and you have no feelings of guilt, no feelings of shame or anything like that. All right, so I think we could all agree that we'd rather be on the right side of this chart than on the left. So that brings us into the benefits of meal planning. So meal planning, of course, can help you with your healthy eating habits, right? So it can help you stick to your healthy eating goals because you have a plan. Right, so even if you have all of the healthiest ingredients in the world in your fridge, if you don't know what to do with them, if you don't have a plan for how you're going to use them, they're just going to sit there, right? And this is what often happens where we get to the end of the week and now there's just vegetables kind of rotting in the fridge, right? We never got around to using them because we didn't know what to do with them. And when dinner time rolled around, we didn't want to have to prepare a whole meal. So you end up reaching for what's most convenient, right? And that takes you off of your healthy eating goals. Whereas if you have a plan and you buy all these nutritious ingredients and you know how you're going to use them and how you're going to assemble them into meals, 
then it helps you stick to your goals, right? And that's how it becomes habit. Meal planning can also help you get more variety in your diet, getting different types of foods in because you can, and we'll talk about this a little bit when we dive into the template here, but you'll be able to, you know, kind of assess from week to week. Are you always choosing the same fruits and vegetables? Are you always using, you know, the same grains? Are you always eating rice? Can you try a new grain? Um, and we know that variety is important to get more variety of nutrients in our diet. And then aside from the health benefits, meal planning will of course save you time during the week. It helps you create a grocery list so you know exactly what you're shopping for, right? Spend less time shopping, save money because you're not, which you see, uh, avoid mindless shopping here, right? You're not mindlessly shopping so you're not buying things that you didn't even need or maybe you didn't even want to have around the house, right? We all have kind of like squirrel brains sometimes in the grocery store where you see a bunch of new products, something you wanna try, you grab it. Um, so having a meal plan helps you create a grocery list to stick to, stay organized. Um, and this of course will also help prevent um, food waste. Like I mentioned, you don't end up with these vegetables that are just kind of rotting in your fridge at the end of the week, everything gets used up. Avoid the dreaded what's for dinner question because we all face that question. Whether you're cooking for one, two, or a family, um, the what's for dinner question is always, uh, you know, always a headache. Um, and it can help you gain confidence in the kitchen and improve your cooking skills and increase your creativity, which we're going to dive into a bit more as well. So how do you meal plan? So this is where our template comes in. Um, so the um, weekly meal planning template is uh, one of the um, you know, handouts that you um, should have received in your email uh, if, since you registered ahead of time. So if you have that template in front of you, that's great to follow along um, because I pull a lot of the template out into this presentation to talk about. So if you have the template in front of you, you might wanna take some notes on it um, to help you know, make it a bit clearer for how to use it. So the first thing to do before meal planning at all, before starting, is to understand your why, to understand your goals with meal planning. Because your goals for meal planning can, you know, yours can be different from mine, right? We just looked at the different benefits of meal planning. So your why for meal planning could be for any of those reasons, right? It can be that you're focused on supporting your health goals. It can be that you're just trying to save some time during the week. To be a mixture of things, right? But that why and your goals for meal planning are going to be really important for you to stay motivated, right? Things always come up in life and it can, you know, there's going to be weeks that you don't want to meal plan, which is fine, right? You don't have to meal plan every week, but always remembering why you're doing it um, is going to always bring you back whenever you are kind of, you know, feeling out of the habit. That will always bring you back into the habit if you can remember why you're doing it in the first place. Okay. You don't want to go all in all at once, right? So this is what I kind of touched on um, at the very beginning there. You can choose, you can plan as much or as little as you want, right? So if you are just starting, I recommend choosing one meal that meal planning will bring you the most benefit. So often that's dinner because dinner tends to be the most challenging meal because we've just worked all day or, you know, or the multitude of other things that could be going on during the day, especially in this past year, right? Maybe you have kids at home also, you're homeschooling and working and whatever it is, um, dinner becomes a challenge because at the end of the day, you don't want to have to worry about what's for dinner, right? So choose one meal to start planning for. Be realistic with yourself. Don't expect to plan all three meals and snacks for seven days of the week, right? Everything doesn't have to be made completely from scratch. You'll see in the meal planning template, I say schedule in some takeout meals, right? It's not expected that you're making everything from scratch. You can use some convenience items, things that are pre-chopped, things that are frozen, right? It doesn't have to be that everything is, is being made from scratch. It's simply that you are just planning ahead so that you know that you're going to have meals to rely on for the week ahead. 
keeping your kitchen well stocked with staples and using those in your planning. And we're gonna talk more about this as we keep going here, but this is super important. Um, and I actually, in this template um, on the, I'm just looking here, on the second page, I give you a link. I have a pantry essentials um, guide and a kitchen essentials guide um, to help you know what to have in your pantry, in your freezer, what kinds of kitchen equipment to have, the things that I consider essential to always have, um, you know, to always be able to kind of rely on what you have to put together a nutritious meal. Um, so that link is in the template um, and I can, I'll put it in the chat also um, when we're done here. So you can grab uh, my pantry essentials guide if you would like. So like I said, it can help you feel confident that you can quickly throw together balanced meals. For example, I always have rice and beans in my pantry, right? So I can always throw together a dinner of rice and beans and a frozen vegetable because I always have frozen veggies in my freezer. So that helps alleviate some pressure around planning every single meal for the week when you know that a couple meals during the week, you'll be able to simply toss together from the pantry staple ingredients that you that you always have on hand. Okay, so there are a couple of different ways that you can really go about meal planning. So one option is to just choose recipes and or your favorite go to dishes to prepare that week and create a grocery list based on what you need. Right. So that's kind of the, you know, probably the more standard way that people meal plan is to just choose a few recipes. Um, and again, this would be just for dinner. Right. And then maybe you're making enough so that you have leftovers for lunches or you have, you know, some other ideas of what you're going to be eating for lunch. But this is choosing recipes or your, you know, go to dishes that you just, you know, make that are in your family that you make and you create a grocery list based on that. Another option, which is what we're going to talk about more today, is leaving more room for flexibility by choosing different foods and ingredients from each food group that you can prep and assemble into different balanced meals. That sounds like a lot of words, but it will get clearer as we go through. Um, so I'll leave it at that and I will explain as we keep going. Or a combination of the two, which is kind of where I fall. I'll usually have, you know, a couple of recipes or a couple of dishes that I know I want to make. Like, um, you know, especially in the winter, I'm, I'm making lots of soups and chilies. So I'll usually have at least one of those on the menu for the week. And then I'll kind of just pick some different ingredients, pick some different proteins that I'll have on hand, some different veggies that I'll have on hand. And then I can prep those and assemble them into balanced meals. So let's dive into that a little bit more. So if you do have your template um, on you, this all of this is coming right out of um, the template here. So this is the first template in, in the guide. So this is the weekly ingredient list. So you would fill in this template with your choices for each food group to have for the week. So the numbers here tell you how many choices to make for the week. So three to four proteins, five vegetables, two to three fruits, two to three starches or grains, and two to three healthy fats. So why I love to start meal planning this way is because this also helps you make sure that you're getting these different foods in throughout the week. Because the different balance and variety of nutrients through the week is, is really more important than what you're getting day to day. So by filling in this form, you're making sure that you're going to have a variety of these different foods to eat throughout the week. And you're gonna get your vegetable servings in for the week. You're gonna get your starch servings in for the week, your proteins, your healthy fats, your fruits, et cetera. Um, and so in the template, I give you some examples of these different foods. Um, you probably know it's pretty straight, you know, it's pretty straightforward what proteins and vegetables and, you know, et cetera, what all those foods are. Um, and I'll show you a sample of this as well. And then the toppers would be things that add texture to the dish. Maybe it's cheese, maybe it's chopped nuts, um, you know, something, maybe it's croutons, things like that. 
and then flavor makers. So that's my little coin term of flavor makers. Um, so that's anything that is adding flavor to your dish, right? So I promise that I'm teaching how to make not just nutritionally balanced meals, but nutritionally balanced meals that are also delicious. So that can be, you know, you can take the simplest dish and elevate it by adding fresh herbs, by adding different spices, by adding um, your favorite condiments. There's nothing wrong with sauces, right? Greens that are dressed in your favorite dressing doesn't make them any less greens. And I'm a big, um, you know, I'm a big proponent of that. I would rather you put dressing on your salad if it means that you're going to eat the greens than have you suffer through eating a bowl of plain lettuce because you, you know, you're afraid of the calories in the dressing, if that, if that makes sense. Um, so adding different kinds of flavor makers to your meals um, is going to be a big game changer for making them actually delicious. Okay, and then the next thing is to assemble those ingredients into meals. So this would be the template that you would fill out for your breakfast, lunch, dinner, each day of the week. And then snacks, you'll see how I fill this out, why I just leave it as a big box like this, because I'll typically recommend just knowing um, you know, having a plan for snacks that you're going to have on hand for the week. You don't need to plan each snack, you know, for each day. You can just kind of say like, okay, I know I'm going to have these three snacks available to me through the week whenever I need a snack, because that can change day to day. If you need a snack sometimes between breakfast and lunch, sometimes between lunch and dinner, sometimes after dinner, it can change. So just knowing that you have a plan for snacks um, you know, for healthy snacks to have on hand so that you don't have to reach for something, um, you know, that's, that, that's more unhealthy, right? That you, that you want to make sure that you have, um, you know, whether that be nuts and dried fruit or, um, you know, veggie sticks and hummus or crackers and crackers and hummus or a piece of fruit and cheese, something like that. And then you make your weekly grocery, grocery list from there. Um, and I highly recommend organizing your grocery list either by the types of foods or the section of the grocery store. This is up, you know, you can rearrange this however you want. If you wanted to make like fruits and vegetables, produce, you might want to add like a frozen section on here, whatever will help you stay organized and on track when you're grocery shopping um, is a total game changer. Okay, so before you go shopping, you create a grocery list, like I just said, based on the meals you just planned. Be sure to include the quantity of each ingredient that you'll need, right? So looking back at the ingredient list, you are choosing, you know, the different foods that you're going to have for each food group. So let's say you choose chicken breast as a protein for the week. Well, now you need to know how many pounds of chicken breast you need. And I can't tell you that, right? That's going to be based on how many mouths you have to feed or how many servings of the dish you want to have. You know, do you want to cook enough that you have, that you get two or three meals out of it? Do you want to cook enough that you've leftovers for lunch? So that's something to consider. Then when you're making your grocery list, you want to be specific in the quantity of each ingredient that you'll need. Um, you want to take inventory of your pantry, fridge, and freezer, and then compare your grocery list with the ingredients you already have on hand, right? So that helps you avoid over shopping, saving you money and time, decrease food waste by using what you already have, and again, helps limit that mindless grocery shopping. So this is why it's really great to have a well-stocked pantry and, you know, freezer, you know, just have some staple items always well-stocked but you wanna be sure that you restock any staples that you use up so you always have them on hand, right? You don't wanna use your last can of black beans and, um, and then not have them anymore. So you always wanna make sure that you're restocking if you um, run out. But so this is, this, is a, um, this is a game changer too, to make sure you take inventory of what you have and then you don't need to, you know, you don't need to double buy it at the grocery store. And this can be a great way for, um, you know, narrowing down your grocery list too, so that you're not um, spending extra money than you need to. Okay, so before we dive into the meal prep portion, um, and again, I'm, I, I will show you a sample of all of this, so it will make more sense as we go through. 
Um, but does anybody have any questions right now on the meal planning um, you know, section of this? What we just went over. Any questions at this point? Just write them in the chat. Let's just see here. Okay. All right, so I'll keep my eye on the chat there if there are any questions. Um, and I will keep going into the meal prep. Okay, so what is meal prep then? So meal prep kind of also gets this, you know, kind of, um, you know, bad rap of being that you're spending your entire Sunday slaving away in the kitchen and you have a million dishes to clean afterwards, right? Like it's this really big um, production and uh, it's gonna take you and, you know, you're gonna have to sacrifice an entire day to it. Well, just like meal planning, meal prep can also be just what you need it to be. So the truth is that prepping simply means you're doing something with the food you just brought home to make it more meal ready, right? So you can do as much or as little prep as you want. You can prep ingredients without preparing all the meals entirely. Again, you wanna start small and do what makes the most impact for you. So it might be just, um, you know, rinsing, peeling and chopping all of your vegetables for the week so that you have, you know, you easily have veggies that you can either, you know, snack on, toss into a salad, or they're already chopped up and ready for you to cook. Um, and that's a huge time saver. And that, you know, can take you under an hour, right? So you, you decide how much time you want to devote to prep, and then you make realistic you know, decisions about what to prep. If you only want to spend one hour prepping, then you can rinse, peel, and chop all your vegetables. And while you're doing that, you could have a pot on the stove that's cooking up some rice for you to have for the week. And that's two big things that are already taken off of your list, right? Because one of the, um, you know, one thing that I hear often like I was mentioning, you open the fridge and you're just kind of staring at everything that's there, hoping that something jumps out at you. Um, how much easier would it be if you open the fridge and that broccoli, that head of broccoli was already chopped up into florets? That would be a lot, that would feel a lot more manageable that you could do something with that versus the head of broccoli that now you first have to, you know, chop it up and you first have to think about what you're going to do. Um, so just that, like, it kind of, it kind of like switches in your head a little bit when you see the vegetables already chopped up and, and just kind of ready to use versus all of the stuff that like you first have to take apart and you know chop up and break down and all of that. So you start small, do what makes the most impact for you. It does not have to be an entire day, um, especially not right away. And like I said, it can vary week to week also. So one weekend, you might not have anything going on all weekend and you're like, oh, all right, I'll just cook all day, you know, but then the next weekend, you really might only have an hour to spare and that's fine. So getting the most out of your prep, you want to have some sort of plan before you step into the kitchen, right? So that helps you to avoid chaos and stress. You want to have the ingredients that you need out. You want to have any equipment, utensils and things that you're going to need to cook. And you want to have an order of the tasks that you're going to do for your prep. So now, you know, you've kind of thought it through. You've decided how much time you're going to spend, right? So now you can make an order of the tasks that you, that you want to get done. You can batch cook. So that's just cooking big portions of something like a grain, right? Don't just cook up one serving of brown rice, cook up a few servings of brown rice so that you can use it throughout the whole week. Cook once, eat multiple times, right? That's the goal here. Batch prepping is sticking to one task without going back and forth between tasks. So what I mean by that is, let's go back to the, um, you know, chopping all your veggies you can chop up all the veggies that you're going to be using at once, right? Just stay at your cutting board and just chop all your vegetables. And you can set them aside in containers or in baggies and label them for what they're going to be used for, right? Or just, you know, if you're going to be using them later, just set them aside, right? But get all of that chopping done, 
stay with your cutting board. And then once that's chop, once all that chopping is done, now you move to the cooking, right? So now you can move to the stove and do anything that needs to be done on the stove. It keeps you from jumping around the kitchen, which can feel very chaotic and stressful. Um, so staying on one task at a time can really be um, very helpful in getting more efficient with your prep. Consider cooking double recipes for stashing in the freezer or to have leftovers for lunch. When possible, I do recommend doing your prep as soon as you come back from the grocery store. I know that's not always possible, but if it is, it just saves you again another step of having to unload everything into the fridge and you're just gonna have to take it out again to prep it, right? So it's just, you know, it kind of takes a, it takes a step out of there. And as much as possible, clean the dishes as you go. Um, so this is a huge, a huge, um, you know, pain for a lot of people, like I said, is just having this, you know, you imagine this kitchen that's just filled to the brim with dirty dishes. Um, so that idea of batch prepping can really help with this as well. Because if you now have done all of your chopping of your veggies, now you're done with your cutting board, you're done with your knife, you're done with your peeler, you know, whatever you were using for that, wash all of it. You know, you finish your chopping, now do some cleaning and then jump to your next task. Maybe it's, you know, at the stove and you're cooking. But that's a good way to kind of break it up as well and to get some cleaning done along the way. Okay, so like I said, it is up to you how much you want to prep for the week ahead. So here are some thoughts to consider. How much time do you want to spend prepping? How much time do you want to save on weeknights making dinner? Or how much time do you have available during the week to cook, right? So you can look at it from both ways. Do you wanna prep and cook entire meals? Do you wanna do this for all your meals or just a couple of them? What tasks do you wanna get out of the way? What will save you the most time during the week? So what's going to be the most bang for your buck, right? If you only have an hour, what's going to be the best thing for you to get out of the way? So those are all just good, um, good questions to ask yourself. And again, these are questions that you can ask yourself every week because every week could look different. Um, so your goals for one week don't have to be the same the next. And that's why this is great because it really is flexible and just kind of losing some of those expectations um, and just seeing this as, you know, it's not meant to be a chore. It's meant to be a strategy that helps you, right? <laughs> that gives you some time back that, makes cooking less stressful, that helps you stick to your eating habits along with all those other benefits that we talked about. Okay, so your weekly prep list. And again, this is all in the template. Um, so if you are following along, um, it's all in there. You can take some notes right on the template. If you don't have it yet, um, you will receive it in your email. Okay, so your weekly prep list, like I said, you're picking your weekly prep day and how many hours you have to spend prepping. So Sunday, I have two hours, right? You just make that decision and stick to it. From there, you're able to decide what you're actually going to prep and what's going to be reasonable in that amount of time. So make a list of everything that can be prepped in advance, looking back at your ingredient list, right? Looking back at that, um, let me just go back here. Ah. Looking back at your ingredients here, right? Um, you can see what can, you know, what can be prepped or looking at your meal plan and seeing what you're planning on cooking. So what can be prepped ahead? Because not everything, um, not everything lends well to being prepped ahead. So take like tomatoes, for example. I don't chop up tomatoes in advance. They don't really hold up well once they've been cut up. Or like an avocado that gets brown once it's been cut into. So I will, you know, dice up an avocado when I need it. So not everything needs to be prepped in advance. Not everything should be prepped in advance. So make a list of what can be prepped. Break down that list into prep tasks. So that can be rinsing, that can be peeling, chopping, um, roasting, sauteing, boiling, right? Any of these tasks that you're going to do, break down that list of everything that can be prepped and write down what you are doing to prep it. Right. So take that broccoli again, for example, maybe you're chopping it into florets 
and then you're blanching it. And then you have to let it cool and then you're going to store it. So that's really like four different things. Um, so you wanna write down all of the tasks. That way you can then make a schedule to keep yourself organized and on track. Okay, and again, this sounds like a lot to do, but the only way it's going to get more comfortable is the more that you practice, the more that you do it. And that helps you learn also um, how long things take, right? If so, this is why this is why I, you know, advocate so much for um, you know getting in the kitchen and for having, and why I like to teach basic cooking skills um, and help you get more confident in the kitchen because it can make a world of difference with things like this. Um, you know, because you might be thinking, what the heck is blanching broccoli and how do I know how long that takes, right? So if Jenny, you have joined the meeting, if you have some, um, if you have those basic cooking skills, it can make this a lot easier um, to keep yourself on track to know how long certain things are going to take so that you can make a schedule that makes sense. Um, but again, this is just going to, it's just going to come with practice. Okay, so here is our example template. Um, and I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna read through <laughs> all of it, but, and it's in the, um, it's in the handout that you received. So you have this, um, but this is just to show you an example. These are all the ingredients. And you can see in the parentheses that I wrote how these would be prepped to kind of give me a note. So I know how I'm planning to prep them. And then turned it into a bunch of meals. This is my own. So I will tell this is a more um, this is a more advanced kind of plan. You certainly don't have to get this detailed. Like I said, the the, the main point here, the biggest key um, is just so that you don't ever have a meal where you have no plan, right? Where you just are, you know, in that position where you're staring at the fridge, right? Where you just want to make sure that there's something that's going to be available for you. Um, and the details can come later, right? It doesn't have to be the super elaborate plan, but this is just to kind of give you an idea to see how, you know, what it looks like. And then this is the prep list, um, kind of, you know, the final prep list. Like I, I didn't, I didn't, um, you know, mark down those specifics <clears throat> of, you know, everything that could be prepped and then breaking that down into a list of tasks. This is really the schedule. This is kind of like the end game here. So, you know, I write down how long it's going to take so I can, you know, really make the schedule and keep myself on track. So I'm, you know, I'm getting all of this done. I'm only giving myself two hours and this should all get done in two hours. It just takes, again, like I said, it's just gonna take practice to get as efficient as possible. So you really only need two things to confidently assemble nutritious meals. And that is nutritious ingredients that are prepped and ready to use, like we're talking about. And then of course, knowing how to assemble those meal, uh, those ingredients into nutritionally balanced meals that are also delicious. So what does a nutritionally balanced meal look like? So this is um, my take on my plate. Um, you've probably seen my plate before. I don't love it, so I made my own. Um, so this is a general, you know, just to give you an idea of what the general ratio of your main, you know, food groups, the main macronutrients should be at a meal. So of course, not all meals are going to be this perfect looking plate, right? If it's a salad or if it's like a grain bowl or something like that, um, you just want to be thinking that you're getting this ratio. So 50% of it is non-starchy vegetables, which are things, I always say, think of things that you would have in a salad. Um, like, you know, it's greens, broccoli, asparagus, uh, string beans, <laughs> um, peppers, onions, all that kind of stuff is non-starchy. Um, so 50% that, 25% um, of it is protein and 25% of it is starches or grains. The little water is here just to remind you to have water with your meals. Um, so I pull the fruit off of the plate because we don't always have fruit in our meals, right? Um, so you just want to, I leave it outside the plate to remind you to get your two to three servings of fruit in per day. Um, but it certainly doesn't have to be a part of a meal. It's often part of breakfast or a snack, right? And then our healthy fat. So you want to aim to get one serving of healthy fat in per meal. 
remembering that your healthy fat might be the olive oil that you use to cook your vegetables. It might be found in your protein like eggs or salmon, or it might be used as a topping like nuts or seeds or an avocado, right? So that's the general, um, you know, I, that's the general formula, I guess you could call it a formula um, for creating a balanced meal. So looking back at, you know, having these different ingredients, you know how you can now assemble these ingredients into a balanced meal by putting, you know, 50% being your vegetables, 25% being one of your proteins and 25% being one of your starches or grains with a serving of healthy fat, putting some toppers and some flavor makers on there to make them delicious and more satisfying. And then your fruits that you're just getting in when, you know, when you can during the day. So I hope that make, makes it make a little bit more sense. Okay, so I'm going to just quickly show you because we're all, <laughs> time is flying by in this presentation. Um, so I'm going to just quickly show you um, this demonstration. We don't need to go into too much, um, too much detail with it. I'm just going to adjust myself here so I can show you. So the demo is intended to, to illustrate this more um, flexible strategy um, and approach to meal planning and prep. So it's going to show you that you can create three completely different meals using the exact same ingredients. Okay, so when meal time comes, all that's left for you to do is assemble these ingredients that you've already prepped, you've already cooked them, and you just need to put them together into a balanced meal using this image, right? So these are our main ingredients. We have shredded chicken that I made from chicken breasts. And again, you have all of these, um, these recipes um, in, your, in the handouts that you received. So our main protein here is going to be shredded chicken. Our main non-starchy vegetable is leafy greens. I'm using baby spinach. Um, our starch is sweet potatoes and tortillas. Our healthy fat is avocado. Our toppers and flavor makers are cheddar cheese, cilantro, and salsa. And then some pantry staple items, right? So the, the foods that I know I'm always going to have around, olive oil, brown rice, the black beans, the eggs, salt and pepper, um, and garlic powder, right? So any spices and things like that, you, um, I know that I'm going to have. And so then we can assemble it into three different meals, right? So shredded chicken tacos, sweet potato hash with the eggs, right? And cooking up a couple of eggs takes like five minutes. So it's not a big, um, it's not a big, you know, thing to have to do when mealtime comes around, especially when you know right? If it's part of your plan and you know that you're going to be cooking the eggs, you give yourself the five minutes to cook the eggs. Um, and then a grain bowl, right? So I prepped all of these ingredients before our presentation here. And I promise you, it took me like 30 minutes to make um, these beans and greens. So it's just black beans sauteed with spinach um, to make these roasted sweet potatoes. So I have a whole thing of roasted sweet potatoes now. I also made brown rice and the shredded chicken. And so I have a whole, this was like one and a half pounds of shredded chicken. Okay, so aside from the rice, which takes like 45 minutes to cook, um, all of this really came together. And so now I have all of this here, right? Now I have all of these ingredients here and this would just be prepped in, in my fridge. And you can see from the dishes that we're making that I can easily turn it into three different meals. So I'm not even having to eat the same meal day after day, right? There's, there's different ways to assemble them. So the first one is we're making shredded chicken tacos using the tortillas filled with the shredded chicken, the beans and greens, and I'm topping it with cheddar cheese, avocado, cilantro, and salsa. The next, the next meal, we have a sweet potato hash where we're adding the eggs on there. And then we have a grain bowl where we're using the brown rice, um, the baby spinach, shredded chicken, sweet potato, and avocado. 
you could even make the grain bowl be more like a taco bowl, right? Like a, like a Chipotle burrito bowl kind of thing. And basically turn everything you had in the shredded chicken tacos into a taco bowl, right? And it's just changing it up a little bit so that you're not eating the exact same thing. Um, because that can really help prevent boredom. <laughs> um, and like I said, increase variety in your diet. Um, but it is super key that you're not getting bored with the food that you're eating in order to create healthy habits that actually stick, right? And for most of us eating the same, for some people it works, for some people eating the same exact thing, um, you know, every day is just a way that, you know, keeps, keeps them on track. Um, but I speak for myself and a lot of, you know, a lot of other people that that's not what we want necessarily. We don't necessarily want to be eating the same exact meal day after day. So I won't go to, uh, since we're running close to an hour here, I won't go through making all of these. Um, they're pretty straightforward. And like I said, you have all of these recipes um, in the handout that you got. But certainly if you have any questions about this, um, just leave them in the chat and we are close to question time. So I just wanna point out, and I mentioned this before, you can see how basic cooking skills and confidence in the kitchen can ease your meal planning and prep, right? When you know how to use a variety of cooking methods, you know which veggies cook up around the same time for streamlining your prep, right? You know what can go in the oven at the same time, what can go in the oven at the same temperature. Um, you understand how to add texture and flavor to your meals to make them delicious and satisfying. You understand how many servings you'll get from ingredients, how much you need. Um, and so again, a lot of this just comes from experience in the kitchen, which you can have, you know, even if you're new to meal planning and prep, if you're somebody who cooks a lot already, if you're the main cook in your household, um, you know, you probably have a good understanding of a lot of these things already. And also a basic understanding of how to assemble a nutritionally balanced meal, right? So that ratio of components, which I showed you, um, plus what to add to make the meal more satisfying. Okay, so just some takeaway tips here. Don't try all new to you recipes in one week, right? So just like I was saying, start small with how much you're going to plan and prep. Also, you know, be realistic with yourself. Don't try all new things, all new kinds of cooking, you know, all new cooking skills and, you know, chopping things differently and, you know, trying to, um, you know, using a new cooking method that you've never tried before. Don't try all these new things in one week unless you have a lot of time on your hands and that's what you want to do. But just generally what I'm saying is don't overwhelm yourself, right? Be realistic. Um, a big takeaway that I, you know, that I really want you to take away here is to take inventory of what you already have and plan around those ingredients. And then don't forget to restock what you do use up. Start small so you don't get overwhelmed, right? Choose one meal to focus on at the beginning. Plan as much as, you know, is going to benefit you and prep as much as is going to benefit you and work within whatever time frame you committed to. Find ways to make prep more fun. And this is just for cooking in general. Um, you know, listen to a favorite podcast or your favorite music, put on a movie in the background. If you have kids at home, invite them to help you in the kitchen. Um, it can be a really fun family, you know, activity. Um, and it's a really great, um, it's a really great thing to expose your kids to cooking um, from an early age. Okay, so that's it for our presentation. Um, so we are ready for any questions. I'm going to pull up the chat and I will, I'll stop sharing just for a moment here. Um, and then I do just want to put it back up. I will give you, um, the last slide, I give you some ways, um, that you can connect with me outside of here. Um, if you have any questions that come up, um, later on and you want to reach out, um, I will, um, let you know how to contact me, but let me see these questions here. Um, so can you send the slides? Um, oh, instead of slides, meal planning demo. Yeah, so the, um, yeah, the, the handouts that you received pretty much outline everything um, in the presentation. Um, I can still 
you know, I can still download and send the slides if that's something um, that more people want. I can, um, we can still do that. I can uh, speak to um, Okaria about that. Um, do you use dried or canned beans? Are they interchangeable? Yeah, so that's so where I'm talking about, you know, kind of using convenience foods where you can, right? That not everything needs to be cooked completely from scratch. Um, I use canned beans more often than I use dried beans. Um, so canned beans is what I always have um, stocked up in my pantry for those, you know, kind of go to quick meals. Um, but they really are, um, I'm just, oh, I lost track of the question there. Um, they really are interchangeable though. Yeah. So if you are comfortable cooking dried beans and that's what you prefer, you can make a big, that's a great thing to batch cook also. You can make a big batch of beans um, and, and have those on hand to toss into, you know, anything throughout the week. Um, do you recommend Greek yogurt or kefir? Um, there, well, so kefir um, is usually like, dr like drinkable. Um, like it's usually more liquid than the Greek, than Greek yogurt. Um, they're both great. Greek yogurt, I recommend also as a protein source, um, especially for, you know, for breakfast. I love to use kefir in smoothies, um, but they're both, they're, they're both, um, they're both very nutritionally dense um, and kefir is also a really good probiotic. Um, so they can both be a part of a healthy diet for sure. How long will wash lettuce hold in the refrigerator? Um, yeah, so washing, I mean, rinsed greens will last, you know, they should last like the five days in the fridge. If you brought them home on Sunday, they should be okay until the end of the week. Um, you, I do recommend if you get like pre-rinsed greens that are in a bag, I recommend taking them out of the bag and storing them in a container with a paper towel under them to kind of absorb any moisture that, um, you know, that comes up. Um, because it'll just in those in those sealed bags, it just collects moisture at the bottom. And that's why lettuce starts to get like wilty and yucky. Um, so I do recommend taking them out of a bag and storing them in a container with a paper towel to kind of absorb some moisture. Um, okay, Denise, I see your message and I will, um, I will get those to you. Timing of meals versus snacks. So this is going to be, timing of meals versus snacks is going to be um, pretty personalized. Um, you know, some people prefer to eat three pretty large meals a day and don't really eat any snacks. Some people prefer to eat smaller meals and like to have a snack between their meals. Um, you know, it really depends on you and how you operate best, what gives you the most energy throughout the day, what keeps you feeling satisfied throughout the day so that you, you know, you're not ever like starving. Um, that really will depend person to person. Generally, I recommend that you're eating something every three to four hours. Um, so if you're having smaller meals, you might have a meal and then, you know, two hours later, you might have a small snack. And then two hours later, you might be ready for your next meal. If you're having three kind of large meals, you might just need to eat every like four to five hours. Um, so again, it just, it, it really, really is more of a, a personal, um, you know, personal thing. Um, but that's generally what I would recommend. You never really want to go more than, you know, four to five hours without eating anything. Um, that's, that's when, you know, your blood sugars will, will really drop and you can, ex you know, um, start to get those hangry feelings. How many days will cooked broccoli stay fresh in the fridge? Um, most vegetables, once they're cooked, they'll last you, you know, four to five days in the fridge. Um, so that's so, you know, that's why most things that I talk about that can be prepped on a Sunday will last you through the week. Um, you know, like if you're prepping it on Sunday, it'll last you through, you know, Friday or even Saturday. Um, that's why I say some things like tomatoes, some things that are more delicate, you don't want to prep in advance because they won't really last. Their quality diminishes a lot. Um, but most, you know, heartier vegetables like broccoli, um, you know, once they're cooked, they will last for your whole, you know, for your whole week to be able to use. And how much dairy do you recommend each day? Um, 
that's also, um, I mean, if you are, <laughs> I don't have like a specific recommendation for how much dairy to have. It's more so, um, you know, we eat dairy either to get protein from it or to get calcium from it. Um, so it's more so looking at how it fits into your whole day, right? Um, and so if you're, like I said, if you're needing to get some protein at breakfast, you can use, you know, Greek yogurt is a great way to, you know, get a dairy serving to also give you some protein. Um, you know, if you're, you know, to, it, it really depends on what you're eating the dairy for. Um, and then that would, you know, that would more so guide how much to have per day. Some people don't eat dairy at all. That's why I, that's why I say that. Um, so there's not like a specific recommendation but generally, if you are eating dairy, you know, like two servings of dairy a day is is good. Um, you know, it might be that you're having the Greek yogurt at breakfast, and then you're having cheese on something later in the day, um, something like that. But yeah, like two two servings a day. Um, organic lettuce that is pre-washed. Do you wash it again? No, I don't. <laughs> um, I trust. You know, um, I trust that they that they are washed. Um, I don't wash pre, like if it's packaged and it's been pre-washed, I don't wash it again. Um, only if I'm buying, you know, a loose, a loose head of lettuce and chopping that up and then I'll wash that. Um, okay. And what is the latest to eat before bed? Um, so that's one of those, and this will be the last question here I see. Um, so that's kind of one of those like food rules. Um, about, you know, not eating too close to bedtime, it, it, there's not really a rule. Like that doesn't need to be where if, what I'm trying to say is if, you know, if it's nine o'clock PM and you're hungry, you should eat, you know, you should eat something. You shouldn't just ignore that you're hungry because you think that you shouldn't eat late at night. Um, you know, you want to, that's, that's the importance of having a satisfying meal is that you've had a satisfying dinner and maybe you've had, you know, an evening snack that's enough to carry you now, you know, until the morning. So I would focus more on that versus a specific time that you should be looking out for. Um, you know, generally, I would say that you want to, tr you want to try to have at least two hours between the last you know, thing you've eaten and, and when you're going to bed, just to give your body enough time to, you know, metabolize it um, and digest it, you know, as best as it can, because it does that better when you're still up and moving. Um, but again, if you are hungry at nine o'clock and you typically go to sleep at 10 o'clock, I'd still rather you have a little snack than go to sleep starving, um, because that can disrupt your sleep too. Um, so definitely don't ignore your hunger. Um, and that's that. Okay. Are there any other questions? Otherwise, I think we are good here. I think I got them all. <laughs> all right. Great. Let me end the recording here. Okay. Or rather, Ellen, can you please end the recording here? This little stop button.